Hello there. I'm in a pretty good mood at the moment, and I think there's three things for that. Like, there's three reasons for it. One, because I got my uni work done for the day. Two, it's because I just saw a fantastic reel on Instagram about a WWE Superfans Day getting made. He got free tickets to SummerSlam, and he got to meet Kevin Owens, got a signed WWE belt, and those videos just warm my heart. Like, it makes a grown man cry. I love those types of videos. It's inspirational, and it's got me inspired for the third thing, which is some Star Trek, ladies and gentlemen, because we are going to be watching some Star Trek today. My name is Ellie Moses. A 23 year old Lauren Phil should in here from Sydney, Australia. Shitty as shot, baby. And we are watching Star Trek, the original series, for the first time today. We are up to episode seven, titled What Are Little Girls Made Of? Now, that's an interesting title, and there's a recurring theme with women in this show so far. But, like, yeah, last episode was Mud's Women. I had hella fun reacting to that. It was just like a hilarious reaction in general. But, yeah, let's see what this episode has in store for us. Let's get into the reaction. Let's have some fun with this thing. Let's smash it. Let's go. Oh, I'd just like to clarify a couple things as well in terms of like the upload rate. Um, I apologize if the upload rate with Star Trek is not as frequent um, as you guys would like it to be. Like, trust me, when I upload, I upload. Like, if you were with me throughout my Buffy reactions, I finished the entire Buffy verse, all 12 seasons, Buffy's seven seasons and Angel's five seasons in 10 months on YouTube whilst doing other things such as film reactions, film reviews, live streams, and things like that, whilst doing uni, whilst doing work. However, this semester's uni work, it's my final semester it is a lot of work so i'm trying to find time to do youtube videos however a good thing to let you know is that when i do upload a star trek video or when i do another upload in general i would not upload a video unless i got more videos in the vault ready to go so i would not upload this star trek reaction without having the next episode already recorded um just recorded not even edited just recorded and in the vault ready to be edited or uploaded and things like that so just some good news for you guys and in terms of like waiting for reactions or what to expect or when's the next reaction going to be coming i hope you guys are understanding with that because if there wasn't uni um trust me this, this, this we'd be going at a rapid rate yes roger darling huh? where are you yes yes by all means captain I, I had no idea no hope darling are you all right yes roger everything is all right now we're on our way doctor We'll be with you in a moment. It's just not all right. It's just not all right. <laughs> you just know. The couple in the background is all smiling and happy that her um, fiance, you know, still alive. But even even Spock's like, hang on a second. And I noticed um, the individual in the background. I forgot her name. The girl in the red, um, the girl in the red dress. Um, she was wearing yellow last episode in Mud's Women, um, which makes me think that this episode was one of the early episodes and um, is just one of those episodes that's actually out of order. This one. Um, but yeah, ah oh, man, ah oh, my bad. I forgot her name. I, I know she's a prominent Energize. character. Getting her may have taken more time than he estimated. Don't worry. Thank you. If these two security men are dressed in red, they're done. Yep, they're done. They're done. They're dying. They're dying. <laughs> they're, di they're dying. <laughs> Rayburn, maintain post here. Yes, sir. Matthews, we'll look for Dr. Corby. You accompany us. Yes, sir. Is there a path down there? No hope, Captain. It's bottomless. You must have slipped. Yo! Any chance of a projection or a ledge? None, Captain. Yo, they're really nailing it with, like, I, I mentioned it before, the color palette with the um, introduction of color in the 60s and things like that. But they're really going balls to the wall with it this episode. Like, you got these fantastic hot pink, um, pink and purple highlights on sort of the um, top of these uh, cave walls and things like that. And it just really makes everything um, beautiful. To, to look at um like i have no complaints with the color palette they're going with this show and the inclusion of these various different forms of highlights and each planet has its own unique um version of highlights they go for and it just adds something unique to each type of um terrain they visit in each episode because each episode um is structured in a way where they'll either have a problem that arises on the ship and then they beam down to a planet or it will be beaming down to a planet early on and the problem arises to the ship but um yeah they really 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 did want to go hit balls to the wall in terms of like exploring different colors and introducing so many colors into each frame 
That was a fantastic creature design right there. Unfortunate. And I told you the guy in the red would die. Unfortunate. Dr. Corby was detained. I came as soon as I could. Beam the security party down immediately. Here it Dr. Colby has discovered that as their sun dimmed, the inhabitants of this planet moved underground. From an open environment to this... That guy looking like the white version of Mr. Manhattan. When you were a student of his, Christine, you must have often heard Dr. Corby remark how freedom of movement and choice reduce the human spirit. <laughs> Every episode, every episode. Why, 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 why you gotta do this to me? I'm Andrea. Hello, Andrea. You must be Christine. I've always thought how beautiful your name is. It's all right now. Andrea Sus. She, she doesn't look human. Give me, Captain. I'm, uh, I'm Roger Corby. Sorry, Captain. Perhaps if I'd been there, I know the passages so well. It wasn't your fault. Stop the Oscar-worthy performance. <laughs> Director Rayborn, report. I'm required to make a security confirmation. When I call my ship, if you list your personnel, cargo requirements, any special needs. Captain, I'd much prefer... Rayburn, are you receiving I'd me? I prefer you waited, Captain. Please, until I've talked to you. I've lost contact with my guard. I'm required to call my ship. No communications, Captain. Roger. I'm sorry. They should send down more people. Roger, that man. He won't be harmed, I promise you. Because there could be things here unknown to you, so terribly important. Sir, one man is dead. I've lost contact with the other. <laughs> <laughs> I love how William Shatner... Um, Whenever he has any like sort of combat movements as Kirk or anything along the lines of that, it's so over exaggerated and I love it. And Humpty Dumpty over here is just Oh, he's an android. I'm guessing Andrea's an android as well because her facial expressions are non existent. It's so robotic. Frequency open, Mr. Spock. Spock here, Captain. Contact established with Dr. Corby. Dr. Corby's records and specimens will require careful packing. It's the Terminator. It's the Terminator. Captain, are you all right? You sound tired. If you move or cry out, Rock may injure you. At least wait until you and I can talk. Acknowledged, Captain. Is everything all right? Fine, Mr. Spock. Dr. Corby has made some fascinating discoveries, all under control. Stand by for regular contact. Kirk out. It's time. Obviously, you know of my reputation. Trust me. Yes, I know your reputation. The whole galaxy knows who you are and what you stand for. Is that a staple Captain James Kirk um, shot right there? Because I've seen it in so many episodes so far. I know we've only been like seven episodes in, but it seems like this shows like staple or like iconic um, Captain Kirk frame would be this medium, um, medium close up shot from like the chest up. It will have Kirk in frame in the center and it will, him, it will be him glancing off to the left, like my right of the screen, but to his left. And I feel like they've used that shot multiple times across the previous episodes like it's like the iconic um cut to kirk frame right there i don't know if you guys agree with me but i feel like they utilize that so much it's like an iconic uh it's like an iconic um pose right there of kirk looking to his left or looking um in like to his left at someone else here it's like the iconic stare and it will like have different shadows it with the lighting no across sense. his face there is so much you must learn before you make a final judgment no you are not the mock christine you will never harm her or disobey an order from her. You will not disobey her orders. Satisfied, Captain Kirk? Yeah, that's going to come Both handy later. <laughs> and trust. Alive? Dead? Ruck was programmed to protect my experiments. The logic of his machine mind saw a danger to me. Where is my other crewman? 
Doc destroyed them both. You're totally against my wishes, I assure you. Cap. Convince me that you're dangerous. Oh wait, this this ain't a, this ain't the ballet fam. The way he picked him up. Rock, no. I do not understand. Shall we start with Andrea? Yes, let's start with Andrea. Yes, let's start with Andrea. I'm like Dr. Brown. An android. Didn't you know? The flesh, the flesh has warmth. There's even a pulse. Physical sensation. How convenient. <laughs> Ex machina, baby. <laughs> you must realize it. An android is like a computer. It does only what I program. You think I could love a machine? Did you? Andrea isn't capable of that. She simply obeys orders. He asked you, There's not no Andrea. There's no emotional bond. Andrea, kiss uh, Captain Kirk. Now strike it. <laughs> There's no emotion in it. Why did Brown try to shoot? Why did he kill two of my men? There are many things I don't understand, Doctor. Yeah, he asked him the real questions. I'll answer all of your questions. Bro, bro, he turned the bodies into Play-Doh. They couldn't even resist with the cast of the bodies. This is how you make an android. Yeah. They're subjects. Oh, it's Kirk. Hey, that's that's one way to get Kirk shirtless. <laughs> Android Kirk. Another doppelganger Kirk. <laughs> Two episodes later. Roger, what's happened to you? Well, when I sat in your class, what well, you wouldn't even dream of harming a an insect or an animal. No life was sacred to you then. Yeah, Roger and that. Prometheus looking engineer motherfucker need to be put down. Uh, Kirk getting violated right now. <laughs> oh, a quick question in regards to the color palette. Um, I know in Breaking Bad, um, the use of color is very symbolic and significant to evoke certain types of emotions and have different types of meaning. Now in this show, um, does the color, obviously, I, I don't want any spoilers or anything, but is the color a means of evoking certain emotions and things like that? Or was it a means mostly just to, you know, um, show off what they could do with color at the time? You know, let's make it look as vibrant as possible. Let's go with these um, various types of color schemes and palettes and just make it look as pleasing to the eye as possible. Because it does look as pleasing to the eye and it's fantastic, especially for the time. Because I'm viewing this through the lens of this being released in the 60s. And if I was watching this for the first time in the 60s, I would just think, wow. Look at all this color. This is absolutely beautiful. But um, I wonder if certain color choices are going to become more apparent um, and more significant as the show goes on um, in regards to certain points of symbolism and evoking certain um, certain emotions with the characters rather than just having it for the sake of it looking good. I'd rather you push me off the same precipice where Matthews died. Oh, no, I can't. Please, go ahead and eat. Androids don't eat, Miss Chapel. Even has your sense of humor. I wanted to say it, that that wasn't Kirk, it was the android and it was a test with Christine, but I didn't want to get, I, don't, I didn't want to be wrong. What about memory? Tell me about Sam. George Samuel Kirk, your brother. Only you call him Sam. <laughs> he saw me off on this mission. Yes, with his wife and three sons. Everything 
been transferred to Earth Colony 2 Research Station. No, Captain. He said he was continuing his research and that he wanted to be transferred to Earth Colony 2. You might as well try to outthink a calculating machine. Obviously, I can't. But we do have some interesting differences. Totally unimportant ones. You may leave now. I wonder... You haven't guessed the rest. I could have transferred you, your very consciousness, into that android. Your soul, if you wish. All of you. It seems like Kirk's... It's android form. It seems no like... human being can have practical immortality. Do you understand why I'm offering mankind? Programming. Different word. But the same old promises made by Genghis Khan, Julius Caesar, Hitler, Ferris. Altuvis. Can you understand that a human converted to an android can be programmed for the better? Can you imagine how life could be improved if we could do away with jealousy, greed, hate? It can also be improved by eliminating love, tenderness, sentiment. The other side of the coin, Doctor. No one need ever die again. Damn, this show was ahead of its time in terms of exploring these themes with AI and things like that, because you see it explored so many times today as well. And recently, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 um, dealt with AI as sort of like the main villain um, with the entity in the film. But you see various forms of media nowadays in Hollywood, even across the 80s, 90s, and today, being influenced by this very episode right here. Now, this episode could have been influenced by various things that came before, in which maybe I have not seen yet, um, but you can see how this uh, show exploring various themes and human aspects here, um, it, it, basically it's ahead of its time in my opinion with what it was exploring with AI, androids, the way technology was moving, um, you know, integrating our consciousness into other beings, you know, that's basically the avatar concept, that's what happens in the avatar films, you know, downloading your consciousness into an avatar and things like that, um, and it's crazy how this show, now watching all this media today, watching all the things I've seen that's come out in the modern era, and then watching this back again it's crazy to see how this was ahead of its time in terms of like they're just rehashing old ideas now in hollywood if that makes sense i don't know if you agree with me but it's actually crazy to see and what interests me in this scene right here is that kirk right here seems to be curious and going along with corby um in this scene it's almost as if he's playing the role of being curious about what's happening at the moment and going along the lines of you know accepting corby's research and things like that um and he's sort of been integrated um into corby's sort of like little crew right here you know he's even wearing the blue and green um divided uh outfit right here so i'm interested to see if maybe this is not the real kirk as well like there's some part of him that's in the android as well or if this is just kirk playing along no deformities, or even fear can be programmed away, replaced with joy. I'm offering you a practical heaven, a new paradise, and all I need is your help. He's got a god complex. All you wanted before was my understanding. <laughs> Proper raw materials. Now, I'm sure there are several good possibilities among your next stops. I want no suspicions aroused. I'll begin producing androids carefully. Selectively. Yes. Yes. There's the iconic no one pose again. No. no need to frighten uninformed mind. This time looking they to the right. Be strongly <laughs> infiltrated into society before the android existence is revealed. I want no wave of hysteria to destroy what is good and right. I created them to impress you, not to replace you. I'm impressed, Doctor. But not the way you think. <laughs> <laughs> Stand back, Rock! I'll kill him. You know, if I was to cast um, Corby in modern times, I reckon Christoph Waltz would play a perfect Corby. <laughs> Do you guys agree with me? <laughs> Yeah, Rock only has to, Rock has to obey Christine's commands. Rock! I love how Rock 
is sort of dressed in this like sort of pink, like light pink baby pajamas. <laughs> like, I don't know why. It kind of reminds me of that. Come on. Over-exaggerated Kirk movements. Let's go. Love that framing Captain right there. Captain Kirk! Where are you? Captain Kirk! I can help you! Careful not to hit your head, Rock. <laughs> Christine, is that you? Come on, man. Spock need to send some boys down. Is that because Ruck was conflicted right there whether to obey Christine's commands or not? With the various eye movements right there? Or maybe... He has a little bit of human emotion in him. Mind your own business, Mr. Spock. I'm sick of your half-breed interference. Do you hear? <laughs> yes. Very well, Captain. Captain Spock, is everything all right? No problems here, sir. Good. I'll beam up shortly with Dr. Corby and Parker. I thought androids don't have... Like this one here, it was only half complete, so... Perk's one doesn't have like any sort of type of human emotions or things. Your landing party. Ready and standing by, sir. Have the meet me in the transporter room after the captain has beamed down. I don't know. It over. I think you'll find planet minus five an excellent choice. Small colony. Raw materials. Andrea's human? No. Not oh, okay, not programmed for you. I was like, what? It's actually like was only programmed to kiss on the peck and hit Kirk. <laughs> no. Yo, this this guy needed to stop, man. This egghead looking ass motherfucker. Oh, yeah, so he did show emotion. Yeah, yeah. You disapprove of Miss Chapel's orders to save my life? Maintain your existence would be illogical. Vin Diesel One. cares about family. Let's go. Can't your memory bank solve a simple equation like that? What happened to the old ones, Ruck? So long ago. Is it possible they built their machines too well? And pride and a desire to survive. You wanted logic and order and found that frustrated by the illogical emotional creatures that built them? Yes, the old ones. The yes. ones who made us. The old ones. <laughs> they grew fearful of us. They began to turn us off. It's Corbin who's creating the same danger to you all over again. Unlike you, we humans are full of unpredictable emotions. Solve. Yes. Yes, it had been so long ago I had forgotten. The old ones here, the ones who made us, yes. Yes, it is still in my memory banks. It became necessary to destroy them. You are inconsistent. You cannot be programmed. You are inferior. The programming. Ruck just gone now? Disappeared? Just vaporized? This is a very interesting episode for me because like I've struggled to grasp like the backstory and the concept of Ruck and his species. Like it was explained so quickly. Um, in my opinion, I'm still trying to understand it. But I love the themes it's dealing with. Not only with 
AI, but just humanity in general and us pushing the limits and boundaries um, of our experimentations with science, us toying with certain things. You know, our curiosity always gets the better of us. We never stop. Um, we're never content. We always keep going. What's the next advancement we can make? What's the next advancement after that that we can make? And that's what Corby is trying to do here. He's trying to create the perfect individual. And he's created, obviously, androids. He's created synthetic androids. But him, even himself, has this God complex. He's challenging God himself. Let's take it a step further. Let's download your consciousness to that. Let's make it immortal. Think of the things we can do. Um, let's download these human emotions into these androids. So it's a constant cycle. You're repeatedly being alive through this synthetic individual. And yeah, I like it. Oh, come on, man. You sold that, Kirk. <laughs> So he downloaded his old body into an android? Still me, Christine. Roger. I'm in here. And this is me. Rock has been shut off. Get a weapon. Deal with it. Protect. Yo, Andrea about to go full John Wick mode. <laughs> I'm the same. Direct transfer. All of me. Human. Rational, but without a flaw. He freed himself and I destroyed... <laughs> destroyed him. The android... I'm not programmed for life. The android couldn't tell between I human and android. Made <laughs> them as stated. She killed the android, Corby. The same way you killed Ruck. Your flawless beings killing off one another. Doing exactly what you hate most in humans, killing with no more concern than when you turn off a light. You're not a computer. Equate. You have no soul, buddy. Transmit. If there's any human left on you, give it to me. No. <laughs> you will never understand. I constructed a perfect being, tested it, proved it, proved it, proved it. It makes you think there's going to be so many more adventures like this in Star Trek as well, where they test the boundaries of humans and the human condition itself as well because like this episode along with the themes I was just discussing before also discusses as well like um, our own creation coming back to haunt us as well because that always happens you know when we test the boundaries or test the limits um, that sometimes comes back to bite us in the ass okay like <laughs> and this is this episode is the perfect example of that you know we humans we aren't perfect and that's I think that's what makes us so unique um, it's because we are vulnerable at times we are never perfect we have these various distinct emotions that we display in life and yeah you can never create the perfect individual we are all um flawed we are not flawless and yeah in trying to create the perfect human it comes back to bite you in the ass and we're seeing here the glitches starting to appear um we we think we have this god complex and then our own creation comes to bite us in the ass look what happened in terminator as well <laughs> look what happened with skynet <laughs> Andrea, give me the weapon. No, protect. I love you. Kiss. Face them together. That's it. That's it. Bye bye, baby. Oh. All the better. Hey, Christine, you escaped, baby. Don't worry. There's better men out there. Wait till I tell you the story, Corby Spock. <laughs> was never here. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> That's the perfect line right there to sum up this episode. Like, Dr. Corby was never here. And that is true. There was no human life on that planet. It was all synthetic. It was all fabricated. 
Yeah, I was rather dismayed by your use of the term half-breed, Captain. <laughs> you must admit, it is an unsophisticated expression. I'll remember that, Mr. Spark. Yeah. The next time I find myself in a similar situation. Steady as we go, Helm. <laughs> Uh, I'm just waiting for another monster to appear, like the end of every credits, honestly. Oh, not, not with this one, unless I missed it, but yeah. That was another uh, decent episode of Star Trek. I think I enjoyed Mud's Woman a bit more. I don't know why. I don't know, I feel like I enjoyed Mud's Woman a bit more than this episode. Maybe because this episode possibly um, dabbled with an idea that I've seen so many times in media today. Um, and, uh, it's been overused and just like, it's oversaturated, like the, the, the theme of AI creating synthetic humans and individuals, like it's been used so many times in media, um, and across various media forms, not only just in recent times, but even like in the seventies with alien, um, and even with Terminator and things like that, like it's been used so many times that I think, um, that's why I didn't enjoy this episode as much, but if I was watching this for the first time in the 60s and I'd never seen this concept ever explored before, I would have been really intrigued. I would have been like, oh, yo, damn, like, and it makes you think as well with the various differing things, um, they are encountering each episode. Um, and I've talked about them rehashing ideas, but so far, um, there've been a couple sort of rehashed ideas, like in terms of like, I remember in the man trap, it was, um, McCoy's girlfriend. He went to a planet. Planet, um or his ex-girlfriend he went to a planet and it, she wasn't um what she seemed to be and in this episode it was the nurse christine um you know who her ex-fiance who was um uh, last seen five years ago or last sent a distress signal five years ago she went to the planet and he wasn't um at all what he seemed even though she was a bit confused in the uh, beginning in terms of like oh no she wasn't confused but she immediately thought it was him um and she found her long lost fiance so similar ideas in terms of like with the man trap and parallel sort of like storylines or ideas but then conveyed through a different team uh theme sorry and this one was sort of like the exploration of ai and synthetic human beings and sort of like um toying with god's creation that god complex as well and again what it means to be human that exploration of the human condition and sort of um noticing the differences between ai and uh humans as well like what differentiates us from ai um and what makes us who we are and why we are special but yeah i enjoyed that episode i think i enjoyed mud's woman a bit more because i had more fun with the concept um and yeah it was just a different tone it was more a bit more light-hearted and fun um and i think the only reason i didn't enjoy this episode as much as mud's women um is because of the ideas explored and it's just like i've seen it all before but again i do not take away from the fantastic production design of this show um, for the time as well and the brilliant color palette. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed my reaction. As always, been your boy Moses. Take care. God bless. Peace.